What's up, Zip fans? Chaz here, we're in Oakland, California, and today we get the honor of hanging out with Dr. Meg Fisher. She's just an all-around amazing person, and she's advocating a ton for paracyclists and para-athletes around the world. So for International Women's Day, we're gonna hang out with Meg Fisher. I'm gonna take her on some of my favorite cutty trails, my favorite gravel rides, and we're gonna get to know Meg Fisher. So uh, let's go do it. How cold was it when you left Montana? Uh, maybe 10 degrees. Brutal. So in paracycling, there's a few different kind of bikes. There's the typical bike, looks just like this, with some adaptations. If maybe somebody has maybe a hand impairment or poor grip or maybe doesn't have both hands. Uh, I actually ride a mismatched crank set because I have my prosthetic leg. So there's a lot of adaptations that can happen to these bikes, but then you'll see hand cycles, which people power with their hands, whether they're kneeling or recumbent, laying back. You'll also see um, tricycles and tandem for people who have visual impairments and so have a sighted, able-bodied pilot and then the athlete, the paracyclist with uh, poor vision in the back. They're called adaptations, right? That's how you, that's like the preferred term to talk about a way that a bike is yeah. changed so that someone can better ride sure. it? Yep, yep. Para comes from the prefix meaning alongside or beside and I think that's a really elegant and universal term that can ha occur, I mean globally. That's uh, so you helped develop this? I helped develop um, and they're I just have been a big fan and he's really good with carbon and he's like, well, I could make a sweet biking leg for you out of carbon. And I was like, yes, please. Two legs, too easy, friends. This is how you just keep the party rolling. So the leg is custom made, right? I mean, totally. every, every pair of athlete, they're, they're, like, their equipment is kind of custom made to them because not everyone no. is not even anywhere close to being the same. Right. You raced a lot, you raced a 100 mile mountain bike right. race. And I think that's as amazing and this is something that I really didn't know that a lot of para athletes are getting into the dirt because I have always seen para yes. athletes racing in like road and on the track specifically. Right. So I was yes. like, this is definitely like a pavement specific thing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's not. You're, you're bringing it to the dirt. You brought it to the dirt. I don't want to say it's... You yeah, I mean, dirt. people definitely have done it before me, but it's... It only takes one person or a few people, I guess, really to kind of bring it to the attention. And I've had some success on the road. And so I'm able to bring that forward to race organizers and kind of show them that like, yeah, like more like we belong on the dirt just like everyone else. And uh, gravel racing, especially and mountain biking, it's much more of an inclusive sport yeah. and culture. The vibe is a little chilly. It's yeah, a little less spandex. Um, and so not that there's anything wrong with spandex. It's like a hug all the time. I love it. <laughs> um, but it just is, you know, just a little more chill. And so with gravel kind of being the anarchy that I think the cycling world needs, I think it's the opportunity to, to try to do better, take some of the good ideas and then elevate that. So what were you saying about the access stuff being really great for paracyclists? Oh, it's a game changer. Like really for anyone who has maybe sore fingers or poor dexterity or strength in their hands, it's really easy to actuate the shifting, like way better than tension or having to throw a lever. And maybe somebody might have a paralyzed hand or I have lots of friends who don't have two hands. And so being able to put blips in addition to other axis like light touch sensors to affect shifting, it's a game changer. The Olympics just wrapped up in yeah. Beijing and the Paralympics are about to start. I think March 4th is the start oh, of the right. Paralympics. And Very so right. the Olympics go on, they get to warm up the town, test out the facilities and then the Paralympics, the real show comes. And you guys get to do and it And we too. get to do it too. Same location, same venue, same everything. That's and it's um, a lot of the same events. There are some events that are specific to the Paralympics. Equal competition, it's it's cutthroat. I, I imagine, I mean, that's kind of the thing. You went to Rio and you went to London? Right, yes. That was insane. Definitely dream come true. What were you, what did you compete in specifically? I was on the road, I raced on the individual time trial and the road race, and then on the velodrome, I raced the 3K pursuit and the 500 meter time trial. That is what's up. Yeah. We just rode up to the top of the ridge. Pretty good, right? Epic climb. Epic climb, and now we're gonna hit some, some actual legitimate trails.
Thanks for hanging out with us. We're gonna go shred some more trails. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. Make sure I wait till this car goes by. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed. If you have any questions for Meg, drop it in the comments and we'll get back to you. Stick around next time. Thanks for uh, helping us make you faster. <laughs>